So, we are now recording. This will be my review of glass. I'm right now coming back from the theater. I left at 10 in the morning to see it. Very complicated day today. Because I did a lot of stuff over there. And I definitely, first of all, saw a glass at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then I went to, you know, check out another movie. And we're going to talk about that one too. And then I went and saw the half of that, like the back end of another movie. That I definitely was thinking about going to see. So, my first initial reaction to Glass. I didn't actually see the full film. I went, I went and screwed myself up with this stuff. I, I drank this potassium chloride before going. And it messed me up. So I had to go to the loo and I missed a really good scene I, you know I saw it later on when I went to go back and look at another showing of the film uh, so I missed that part and then I had to watch the rest of the movie all the way through it definitely is going to be a talked about film I'll put that as my first initial thoughts like well this is going to be a I'm not, you know, I have issues with the ending. Other than that, the whole movie is just basically a beautifully done M. Nightian, uh, what you'd expect it to be as far as his trying to just come together and make an actual sequel to Unbreakable and Split at the same time. It feels definitely very well made, very well crafted, nothing you know, terribly wrong with it, uh, but, yeah, I just wish it ended a little more, clim you know, it's an anti-climactic ending, in my opinion, this is a non-spoiler review kind of thing, so that's where I want to go with it, I want to tell you what happens, but to me, it was like, not what I wanted, not what I hoped for, and yeah, he does indeed, he makes you think when you're watching the film, it's going to be a big Avengers fight to the finish kind of thing. It ends the way you would expect M. Night to just, you know, end it. And I wish it ended more ambiguously, that's another thing I have to say. It's not ambiguous the way that they explain uh, who... David, Glass, and the Horde are. There's no ambiguity to it. It's just, yeah, straight up in your face. This is who these people are. This is the way the world has been working out for so long. That's, you know, this is not an uncommon thing, this, this whole superpowers thing. So there was a, there's like a, I don't know, I guess M. Night himself had a bit of like a, a tug of war with himself about whether he should try to convince the audience that they either are really superheroes or they are truly just some people that with some sort of psychosis problems or whatever. Extraordinary mental capabilities and extraordinary strength are not uncommon in normal people. Uh, you know, it's the aspect where they're kind of some sort of freak of nature, uh, type of comic book hero that is being disputed and uh, I'm gonna have to it's a movie you got to see again don't take your first initial reaction of it and say that's it that's what I think I think when I did go to another showing of it you can see the other way you know there's there's all these little clues to how it's gonna go down sp you know, sprinkled throughout the film there's all these little lines set there's all these little clues so they're you know it's it's, an, it's a movie that needs a repeat to look at, um, and it's it's an open ending. There there is no conclusion to the story in this particular film. It does not say this is it. There's nothing else to say. It really just kind of opens the door wide open to even more sequels to some extent, and who knows if that's gonna happen? But you know. Do I like the movie? Do I not like the movie? It's a fan 
service to me when I get down to it and I think about what it really is as a, at its core it's a it's a fan service kind of film it's it's like if you know there you know there there, there was a, a more of a okay let's make a movie that has a full acknowledgement that unbreakable exists it doesn't really feel like the next chapter of the unbreakable story as much as it is, is a celebration of unbreakable's greatness there's an that's a part of what the movie really is at its soul it's like saying wasn't unbreakable great and it's the conclusion of the split storyline if you didn't like that storyline this movie's you know it doesn't dwell on it that much so it doesn't really care if you like that movie that much anyway and ultimately, overarchingly, it is the storyline that ends the Glass character's story the way he interpreted it to go. He wanted it to go. He designed the entire events of all everything. When you really get down to the way it, 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 it speaks to the fan service aspect of things, it, like fan theory that people have been talking about online for so long is brought up in the film. You know, and, and and becomes a plot point in the film that, yeah, Mr. Glass is the architect of every single person's existence and reason for being. He's the guy who manufactured all of it. And, you know, everything you think that, that, that Elijah was doing in a mental hospital, there's no surprises. Yes, he is super smart and he has been, you know, playing around and, and messing with electronics in there and you know he, he's been able to just hack computers all day and do all kinds of things to the camera setups and he's been doing that for years and years and years apparently at no point does he just want to just break out and go hang out somewhere else this is kind of like if Dr. Lecter could just get out of his cell and G Dr. Lecter's a genius level intellect kind of guy wouldn't he just freaking just leave the, the prison instead of staying there? So it's weird that Elijah doesn't just at some point just leave when he knows he can just tear apart the entire prison because he's memorized the blueprints of it and all that. So that's a strange thing that he just stays in there for that, that long rather than get out and do something else. Uh... So you can pick the film apart a million times, but the point is that it is wow. It is it like it 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 it, it is not a satisfying conclusion to the storyline of Unbreakable or even Split. If you like those characters and you want to see them continue their stories and go forward, this is not that movie. Um but it's definitely a bridge point. It's a bridge to a whole new kind of thing where M. Night could go make more about other characters, about other superheroes that are emerging in society and do something with that. And it definitely is a... Uh, uh, it, it definitely is a, okay, what does happen next kind of story. And you definitely get to see David Dunn's powers and, and see what he can do with them and that's what we all wanted to see and it was nice to see that and uh, it, it's just I wish the movie wasn't so short it doesn't you know it doesn't fulfill all the things it could have done to show us these characters full potential and even Glass says you haven't done crap you've only been doing little things to these little bank robbers and stuff you ain't done nothing to no real actual super villains and we got to see that so it starts with you know it starts teasing you with oh yeah we're gonna have a showdown between these two superpower mother effers it's gonna be great and then it just just kind of snips it and says I'm not doing it so but yeah it's a heavy film it's a lot to take in it's a very big meaty film that you have to sit and you know, either you going you in for you, you you either you going to sit there and get into a story and try to figure out what's going on, or you're going to be like, I don't feel it. So it's going to is the the big word to describe this is divisive. It's going to divide people. It's going to just kind of be like, 
a lot of people think it's fine. A lot of people think it's just not what they wanted, not their cup of tea. So I'm going to check it out again and again and again, see if I can, you know, figure out all of its little, little tiny, you know, uh, hidden secrets and uh, what do you call those things? Easter eggs. Uh, and then I'm going to, you know, look at it from a different perspective later on. Because, like, Split is a movie that's very similar. And that it's just, you don't really want to watch that movie again and again and again. It's a clunky film. It's very hack, hack together kind of film. It's it's weird film. Unbreakable is a much more streamlined. Because M. Night was younger then. M. Night was just trying to make normal movies back then without his trying to weird, quirky, artistic things going on. So Unbreakable doesn't really try to be this new age, complicated, different type of movie. It's just, okay, I'm going to play it straight, and then we're going to introduce superpowers here and there. But that movie's so grounded. And now we're turning... We're, it's, it, it, this movie tips things in a way that I wasn't expecting it to do it, but it goes full hog into tipping the unbreakable storyline into, okay, this is freaking Spider-Man and Marvel and all that stuff now. When you watch those movies, there's no doubt that, yeah, they were in a fantastic superhero universe. Everything's fantastic and superhero-y. And when you watch Unbreakable, it's kind of refreshing to have a movie where you don't have all these superpowers on display. You're just dealing with a guy who's trying to figure out whether he even is any kind of special person or nothing like that. And to some extent, that part of this movie is what I like the most, is that, oh, you know, the doctor lady is questioning where these powers they have or any is there any truth to them she explains that there's, there's factual reasons why people normally can have these kinds of things you know and then they start to she you know she convinces them of that and then it's all blown out of the water to some extent and they just kind of go with the idea that this is spider-man universe this is all that stuff hulk and all that this is where you can get radiation powers and everything it is I, you know, the ambiguity would have been interesting to put there and say, okay, maybe it's all, you know, but the ambiguity isn't really there. Everything you hear in the trailers about, okay, the doctor lady's wrong. Yeah, that's exactly how the movie plays it. She's wrong. She's not, you know, it is a, it's like a surprise to who the doctor lady is. So, you know, when you see it, you'll find out. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I saw Mary Poppins, definitely a great Mary Poppins film that's going to go down. Like, people are going to discover it more later. It's definitely very well made. It's definitely corny and just as weird, trippy as the original film. They were very reverential to the original film. Uh, I would have preferred them to actually try to do more serious filmmaking rather than try to just keep it the exact same level as the original Mary Poppins is just as kind of trippy little film that you know it's so cheerful and yippee dippity you know that 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 kind of is like well I don't really buy that but it's definitely the only aspect I, you know, clearly missing from the film is Julie Andrews. No cameo. I didn't see one. But Van Dyke and someone else is in it. And they're spectacular. They will freaking melt your heart to see them again. The film is such a hearkening back to the era of Mary Poppins where films were like that. A lot of films came out that were just actually nice to watch and cheerful and fun. And there was no blowing things up it was just a fun film for children anyone uh then i went to see dragon ball broly i did not see the beginning of it i don't know how that thing started but i saw the ending i saw the fight at the end i saw all of that and that movie is a crowd pleaser it's really fun definitely check it out if you got the time and you're just looking for something to do um it's the exact movie that Dragon Ball Evolution just wasn't. It has the Toriyama style where he just, you know, it's just anime style in general, honestly. But 
Yeah, it's like it's lighthearted and it's full of little jokes in between all the intense action and drama. So that's really what was refreshing about it. After you see a serious film like Glass, you see Mary Poppins, you go and you watch Dragon Ball, and you're re- you're re- reminded that there's levity moment, there's anime kind of things going on, where you know not everybody's just you know there's like breaking the fourth wall kind of little things that that filmmakers don't do much of anymore and it's it's loaded with that and it's just it's I, we i saw it with a big crowd of people and they were like clapping and cheering it was like you don't get that from the other films but this one yeah everybody was into it and saying yeah ending is very uh i don't even know if it's like a different ending than the original broly film it's like it's hard for me to know what I'm watching anymore with this Dragon Ball franchise. It's just, I don't know anymore. Apparently, this is Toriyama's version of Broly, but I didn't see much of a difference. He's still Broly. He's still being controlled by his father and stuff. Everything looked the same to me. He's extremely powerful. Only difference is in the original Broly, there was no Super Saiyan God in Blue and all that weird Skittles shit they got going on now, so... He didn't have nothing to do with that, you know what I mean? There was no concept of Broly being on the level of those guys. But in this one, yes, he goes toe-to-toe with Super Saiyan Blue and kicks. You know, it's probably no secret that he's on their level, even on his base form. All kinds of... It's a very rushed film, too. Like, things happen that would take ten episodes and then cap in five seconds in this movie. So, But it was so good to see Dragon Ball on the big screen... People flying through mountains and going into different dimensions and stuff. And that's how powerful these characters have become now. They can travel not only through space and time and different dimensions now and stuff. So that's that's where the Dragon Ball is going. It's just, it's just repetitive what Dragon Ball has become. Okay, we had Jiren who had a bottomless pit of energy. Now we have Broly with a bottomless pit of energy. So it's kind of just the same exact thing. Goku is just looking for a more powerful person than him. He's surprised to find that Broly, a Saiyan, is just a billion times power more powerful than him. And he wants to actually go toe-to-toe with him and keep him as a sparring partner. And exact same thing as Uub, exact same thing as Jiren, all that. It's just the same repetitive thing. But I need to see it from the beginning to really understand what the hell I was watching, because I don't know. But this is good. Apparently it's doing well at the box office. And if it does do well, then they might want to make more. And I'm not hoping for a Dragon Ball Evolution 2. I put that to bed. But live action Dragon Ball is still on the, on the menu if Dragon Ball is still popular and people are still going to see it. And that's where I end things. This probably went on way too long. Uh, check out Glass. It's worth the money. Check out Mary Poppins. It's a really good Mary Poppins film. And... There's just some great acting in that film. It's like they, they, the actors in it, they make the movie. The, 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 the script, who cares? You know, the child actors are hit or miss. They're just children. You know, they're not really, they're not good actors. But the, uh, the real regular actors, actresses, so good, so good. Whoever Manuel Miranda is, brilliant. And the movie is just fun and it's a delight. It's a treat. It's like a, it's, it's Jello. It's just yogurt is beautiful and dragon ball go see dragon ball if you can it's just with a big crowd it's awesome because there's so many jokes in that film it's gonna be like it's fun that's it and i'm done